Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the final session of the day, uh, which is a storage session. We had several storage sessions earlier today, so uh, it's, it's a good way for us to zoom in and see what we've done in the last cycle. And with me, I have today, uh, uh, by the way, my, my name is Sean. Uh, those of you who doesn't know me, I'm a principal product manager in OpenStack, focusing on storage across the board. Um, uh, today I have uh, with me John Bernard, who is uh, one of our uh, senior software engineers focused on Cinder. Um, I have to apologize on behalf of Flavio, he's actually in a, not a next door room. Uh, Flavio is also the Zocker PTL, so he's running his design <laughs> workshop in parallel along with another uh, glance uh, design session. So he'll be joining us, I hope, at the end. Um, and if we look at today's talk, right, uh, and I, we, the, the title is very overwhelming, right? Uh, the enterprise ready OpenStack storage. And uh, the main question you need to ask yourself is, yeah, you can ask yourself what does enterprise mean, right? But I think what is, why road? Why, 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 why are we not there yet, right? So, and are, are we there yet? And for us to actually, I want to take you throughout the journey for the next 40 minutes, uh, throughout some of the stations uh, that we find that are enterprise-ready uh, uh, stations, including high availability, volume management, business continuity, which is a very fancy word for backups, um, disaster recovery, uh, to those of you who missed uh, my yesterday session, dude, where is my volume, um, and deployment and rolling upgrades, which is a, a, a big area of pain today in OpenStack. And we're going to finish with some of where we are in security. And, and to those of you saying, yeah, storage, but yeah, we have all these concerns when we talk about storage, uh, uh, let alone when we need to deploy storage in production in OpenStack. So the, 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 the theme we're after is what do we need to do in order to get production grade ready in enterprise environments? And this is the session we're going to uh, go in the next 40 minutes. And without further ado, let's kick the tires. So we'll start with high availability. Um, when we talk about high availability, uh, we still need to define what high availability is all about in the context of storage. But it, in a nutshell, all services that powers the OpenStack API should be always on uh, and able to always respond during failure, but also during massive stress. So when we talk about highly availability, high availability, it's also in the context of scale, right? Uh, we need to provide protection against both hardware and software uh, single point of failures. Um, and with that in mind, let's go back a second to see where we are today. Uh, so there are cases, and we are, we're going to start with uh, Cinder, which is the block service for OpenStack. And there are cases today where volume is actually left in an unrecoverable state, uh, and, and it's not actually possible even to delete the volume uh, without manual intervention by the cloud admin. Uh, for example, if a Cinder volume node dies for any reason, uh, natural die, uh, um, during volume create request, that is, uh, 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 the volume will be actually un unresolved. So this is uh, an area of concern. Um, and where we are today, so we have single volume service running in active active state, uh, but uh, we find it, as you saw the truck earlier, right? Uh, we don't think the current implementation of ActiveActive is actually safe, right? Yeah, it's, it's true. Um, so for, for ActivePassive, um, it, it, I think it works fine. Uh, for ActiveActive, um, there are, at, ver at the very least, there are some, there's, a, there's some classic race conditions in the volume API service um, where the, the volume state is queried from the database, some local state is created, and not shared with the other sender volume nodes. Uh, and then later the, the database is updated uh, to reflect the, the current state. And this, will, this opens the, the door for, for volume, sender volume nodes to race against each other um, in an active-active configuration. So to be clear, um, an active-active sender is, is certainly not, not safe. I think some shops even um, run it in this configuration, but, but it, um, <laughs> If you push hard enough on it, I, I, it, it, sh it will break, I'm sure of it. Um, and so uh, it's, it's something we're working on now. In fact, um, uh, a lot of visibility has come onto it in, in recent weeks and, and, and months. Um, and so people are coming together to try to, to, try to offer a solution. Um, there's a lot of pieces that are involved in order to um, 
in order to get Sender to, to a place where it can be run safely in active active mode. Uh, and so um, there's some blueprints posted and, and even some design sessions tomorrow to, to cover these things. So we're, we're moving there and we're aware of, of the shortcomings. Uh, but at the moment, this is, this is the current state. Yeah, thank you, John. So as you see, I wanted to start today's discussion with where the problems are, and this is a big problem, right? So if we wanna deploy OpenStack in production with block storage, we need to fix these things. Um, some of the progress we've done in the last cycles in Kilo, so uh, iSCSI multipathing. So Nova Compute supports multipathing for iSCSI volume data path. However, some backends uh, only respond to uh, uh, discovery with a single portal address even if it's a secondary portal are available. And the, the work was been done during uh, the, this cycle actually enable uh, 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 Cinder for this driver uh, to return multiple iSCSI paths information uh, so to overcome this problem. Uh, however, this is only one step uh, from the block side. There's still work enabling me to be done in Nova side. So as we see there, as we're moving on, uh, storage is not a, 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 a an island in OpenStack. It has to integrate, it has dependencies, as there's a lot of cross integration between other projects, even to enable a single feature. So this is, for, for example, in the iSCSI multipathing. Uh, Horizon, so um, the reason we bring it up because it's in the context of uh, uh, high availability, so now we have a front door, uh, what we call migrate instance button, uh, that allows administrators to use a simple way for preparing hosts for maintenance or uh, upgrades, right? So it's very useful for uh, upgrade scenario also to test and perform annual disaster recovery. So now we have a, 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 a push button so we can automate this process. But is, are, are we there yet? Uh, for, well, so for, uh, for live migration, um, it, certain configurations do work. There, there's still some work to be done. Um, um, there are, there's an existing bug in Nova with the way that the block device, the block device mapping is, is maintained. Um, that can cause bugs if the LUN changes, uh, which, is, which is something we should be able, to, we identified earlier in a design session, I think we should be able to knock that out pretty quickly. Um, and further, multi-attach in Cinder uh, sh should also help with that. Um, and so certain, certain vol um, driver backends that, that um, um, can, can participate in, in multi-attach and, and should be able to benefit uh, and, and allow live migration to be more less less of a um, of a dice roll and more of a something you can rely on. All right. Um, with that, let's talk about uh, some concurrent resource mutation and how we're going to kill them uh, with uh, some of the new initiatives in Cinder. Uh, so the road to active active that's how we call it and there's a new initiative called the Cinder State Enforcer. By the way, we are including links in each one of the topics we're going to cover today, so you'll be able to just uh, download the slides at the end and go into the relevant specs to have a full spectrum of what's going on. Uh, so, a few words. Long-standing work on improving Cinder volume state uh, management and reliability uh, allow us to improve failure tolerance, that's the key, uh, in order to mitigate the concurrent resource access uh, our problems in Cinder. Uh, work was done in the last cycle to refactor the concept of lock, right? Uh, so we can actually have a set allowed and disallowed uh, transitions uh, uh, using the new enforcer model. So we're basically trying to get rid of those mutation uh, in Cinder. Uh, more on the road to active active. So uh, I'm act this is actually a link to a very active etherpad on the topic and, and some of the progress and, and things we still have to uh, untangle. Uh, for example, uh, local file locks in Cinder volume need to enhance the lock reporting uh, to Nova base, so the, the, the volume active state. So as I mentioned earlier, there's very tight relationship between compute and storage, and that's exactly it. So if we have an unresolved state in Cinder, what do we want Nova to do about it? Right now, Nova doesn't even know that we have a problem. So how, let alone how, we, how it can take an operation upon this. So that's one area. Uh, DB access in drivers. Today, we have a lot of uh, direct access by Cinder backend drivers directly to the uh, Cinder database. Uh, this needs to be minimized or limited at all. Uh, why? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I tackled it. So, so <laughs> uh, this database actually maintains the consistency. And if we have somewhere external driver uh, uh, writing to this database, 
we're done. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, that in, in the context of consistency, right? Uh, we, we're trying to improve that. Point. Yeah, sender objects will should address this as well. I think I think we have a slide on that coming. All up. right. Yeah. Good. So Nova is expecting the internal state uh, of sender volumes to be determined to take actions, rather actually uh, uh, properly delegating the attach, uh, uh, detach, for example. Um, other work being done in this area to mitigate uh, active active is the task flow for managing create volume tasks. This is an active spec work uh, being done. Uh, the improvements of state management can get a step closer uh, by uh, uh, leveraging uh, state management, uh, what we call task flow. So this one is just the create volume task. If we actually be able to nail it down and it's proven, then we can expand it to the rest of the states. So that's another way we can actually untangle this problem. Um, moving to volume management, so uh, I think you just mentioned the multi-attach, right? Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about it? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, so there's um, uh, the ability to attach a volume to multiple hosts at the same time is, is a feature that was being worked on in Kilo, and, and it's, uh, it's landing. There's still some work to be done to expose it in Nova and, and in the sender client, um, and so it's, it's moving forward, um, but it's, it certainly hasn't crossed the finish line yet. All right. So uh, this is the red, the red, the small detail lines, right? If you read the label, uh, it's landing in Kilo. You cannot use it. We need Nova, right? So we're just explaining. And the main use case is we, we, we have clusters. We want to run a cluster at the hypervisor level, application level. We need to map the same volume to the two hosts, right? So we have, obviously we need compute to play a role here. Uh, uh, so only, we only done the cinder uh, implementation. Um, with that, let's talk about volume migration. That's another uh, key. Uh, volume migration has been here for a while. Also, volume retype. Um, but what's the confusion around that? <laughs> Thanks, Sean. I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> right. So, so for migration and volume retype, um, Sender provides these abs these abstractions, and um, uh, underneath under the hood, it, 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 it tries to do it as intelligently as it can. And so, it, it makes some choices, um, and it it, it gradually falls back to. Uh, um, uh, to, to things that, that should work if, if, the, if the most intelligent choice fails. And so um, for migration, it, it, will, it will throw the operation down to the driver if, uh, to see if the driver can, can do a migration such that uh, it could benefit from, um, um, from references or, or copy on write or something like that. And, and if that fails, if it says, no, I, I can't support that operation, then it will fall back to generic migration, which, which will cause the volumes to be attached to the host and DD will be, will be exec to move the data. Um, and so what you get when you ask for migration de varies depending on your configuration and what exactly you're doing. Uh, and retype is the same way. It will, it will um, attempt to do the retype within the driver. Um, and then if that fails and migration is required, it will call into, it will, it will call into the migration routine. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of paths. And um, when things fail, it's not always obvious. Sometimes it, it can succeed or fail depending on um, the parameters. Yeah. Um, that you send to the command. So, so this is an area that if you are doing volume migrations, please take a closer look also how do you use it, right? So it's not by default. For example, you, you may use volume retype to kick your migration, but you have to specify it. Um, and with that, let's talk about what's coming up in Liberty. Uh, right, so in, in Liberty, um, I'm working on a feature that will allow um, drivers that, that um, don't support local attachment via iSCSI or Fiber Channel or, or, or something similar uh, to participate in volume migration. And so um, I mentioned earlier that, that if, if all else fails, it will fall back to attaching the, the volumes locally and then using DD, which, which obviously requires a, a file path to the, to the block device. Um, and so for something like RBD, um, we use libRBD, and um, there is no path to the block device in that case. How many of you use Ceph in the room? Raise your hands. All right, so this is an interesting thing for you, right? So just keeping in mind that you're still with us. All right, thanks you. Uh, moving on, business continuity, right? So as I said, it's a very fancy word for backups, and let's talk where we are with backups. So progress, and this release we were able to actually land incremental backups. And since the backup API was extended to actually support snapshot-based backups where the volume can actually remain online and in use during this operation. And, and the target can be either Swift or NFS. Uh, the enhancer also include performing a backup from snapshot, right? So this is a typical use case. You don't have to actually do your backups from the original volume because there's performance uh, 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 cost for that. So it's actually a, a better practice to, to, to do it from snapshot. 
Uh, new Cinder CLI uh, was added, so you can actually use it. Uh, in Swift, it uses uh, the Swift uh, Pi, so you can actually uh, calculate the deltas between the snapshots. And during restore, differential backup needs to be restored. The restore process actually first restore a full backup, similar to what we've done in tapes. <laughs> In the old days, you have to do your full first and then incremental to follow. Um, other improvements on backup. This is actually a very strong theme that we see in Kilo release in Cinder, right? So we're closing a lot of gaps. And some of the gaps is till now we have only had backups for block. Now we have NFS as a target and POSIX as a target. So it's very important. Uh, backup support for encrypted volumes, right? So what are we doing with encrypted volume? So there was no support for encrypted volume in the backup. Now we do have support for encrypted volume. So as you see, we're, we're moving up the ladder of actually getting more robust in backup. However, uh, there's st still gaps we're going to talk about in, when it comes to scale with the service. Um, this is a Nova progress, but I'm mentioning it here in the context of lock. Why? Because backups are a topic, as you can see. This is why we group this topics together because some, as, I, as you already figured out, this is not just work in Cinder or in Glance or Swift. It needs to happen across the board to enable. Um, Nova, as in KVM specifically, is leveraging the Cumo uh, GA guest agent uh, that can support out-of-the-box out of quiesing of the file system. Why it's important? Because if you're running backup, you want backup to be consistent. So that's the first stage that was done. It's very useful, of course, to taking uh, 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 as, uh, uh, when you take a backup, specifically if you run uh, uh, upgrades or uh, maintenance, so you better uh, utilize this. Uh, in the future, we'll be able to leverage things that's already available today in Cumul GA in KVM, but we need to expose them in OpenStack, such as uh, allowing hooks, so you can actually stop, uh, not stop, or quiz like MySQL database in a hot backup mode, so you have a full application consistency for your backup. Uh, in Windows, you can use VSS, for example, in the guest agent, et cetera. Uh, so there's still room for improvement, but that's a major uh, uh, step forward when you're taking backups consistency, not just crash consistency, but file system consistency and later application consistency. Um, Swift, um, one of the biggest features have landed in this release, which is erasure coding. Erasure coding allows you pretty much uh, it, by the way, erasure coding is, is, is one of the storage policies, and as you remember, storage policies was a big feature that landed a release ago. So now we're able to uh, leverage this feature. In a nutshell, it allows us to reduce storage costs associated with massive amount of data, such as backups. Um, and of course, it's very useful when performing volume backup to Swift, which is a typical scenario uh, we have today in uh, OpenStack. And of course, uh, uh, this can be compressed uh, uh, and allow us to read once for, for, and written for this system. So I think that's a very nice feature. One red label, right, as we mentioned earlier, beta. This is a beta uh, feature. Don't use it yet in production. You may lose your data. Yes, we are talking about the backup and restore, so this can actually work against you. So, <laughs> but however, if you won't test it, we won't get it mature enough to use it. So yeah, this is where we are. Um, more backup improvements in Liberty. So Cinder scaling, as I mentioned, we came a long way in Cinder backups, but we still have a scale problem. Uh, currently, the Cinder backup service actually uh, uh, has to, uh, the drivers need to couple and run together in a single node, uh, and we're trying to actually decouple uh, this so we can actually scale out this service uh, uh, and, and also improve the performance problem we've seen lately here. And there's design sessions actually just to address this topic. Uh, last one on the backup side is Swift uh, with fast posting when pretty much uh, where your post uh, to an object will trigger a container object uh, and, and to guarantee uh, data consistency in the container. So we had a busy uh, uh, business continuity uh, release and now let's talk about disaster recovery. Um, so in Cinder, we introduced consistency groups uh, a few releases ago. Uh, this, several enhancements that were done in this release just for consistency groups, uh, added the ability to add and remove volumes from existing consistency groups, as well as added the ability to create consistency groups uh, from existing uh, group snapshot. Right? So these two enhancements, we're going to talk about consistency groups later in the context of replication as well. Um, what else have we done in Liberty? So this is looking ahead, uh, we're here at the Liberty design session, and one of the things we, uh, we're going to introduce in Liberty is actually Cinder import uh, of snapshots. So today, uh, I can, there, using OpenStack snapshot mechanism, I can create the new images, 
Uh, uh, and it's very convenient for me uh, when upgrading base images for taking published image, custom image, local use as I need to. But one use case we haven't thought about is what about external use? So this is why we need this feature. It pretty clearly allows us to import uh, volume snapshots uh, from one city to another. Think about the, all the different use cases when this comes along, as well as allow import non stack snapshots. Think about snapshots you have actually residing already on your storage backend. Now you can actually export the snapshot uh, um, uh, in a similar way to we were using uh, in export volumes. So this is two uh, uh, themes that were added, ability to uh, actually import from uh, snapshots from uh, existing uh, backend. Um, more, as, as I promised, replication. So replication has been here. We, we, uh, we're pushing replication already from ISOs. Uh, currently, the API state is we have several vendors backend uh, that have done implementation, but it's not unified API, meaning we still have a way to go to expose, all right, are we doing synchronous replica replication, asynchronous replication? Uh, not all drivers are written the same way. So this is why we, 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 we're seeing uh, uh, um, a slow adoption on this feature in terms of uh, vendor because there's still a way to go and we have a design session actually to tackle this topic. But specifically, I want to uh, talk about two things we missed in version one of uh, volume replication and Cinder. One of them is actually replication between Cinders, right? Uh, till now, we're only limited to a basic replication in a single deployment. Uh, I mentioned consistency groups. So we added volume replication, we have the consistency groups, but we haven't connected the two. Uh, so we need to align the work and the design with uh, the volume replication spec. So that's also uh, work ahead to be done. Um, looking at deployment and rolling upgrades, uh, and this is actually another topic that we see from the enterprise, right? Uh, uh, it's not just the high availability, it's not just the business continuity, we also need to deploy, uh, work on uh, solving uh, problems around deployment. And um, this is actually work we've done in Glance. Uh, you want to cover this one? Sure. Uh, so I've been talking <laughs> for a while. Yeah, you're very, you're very good at it. Um, so Glance has actually seen a lot of, a lot of cool features uh, for, for this cycle. Uh, just two of them to, to, to cover our, our introspection, the ability to um, um, query metadata about the image without actually downloading the, the entire image uh, in order to do so, which is great. Um, it allows you to, to know whether or not a, a compressed image is going to expand w within the amount of space that you still have remaining um, without actually trying it first and watching that fail. Um, so th this is good. Um, and also image conversion, the ability to convert an image during the, during the import process. Uh, and so, for instance, if um, if you're, using, if you're using something like, like RBD for b both Glance and Cinder, um, uh, you can take advantage. If, if, you, if, you, if the images are, are in raw format, you can um, take advantage of copy on right in that case. Uh, and so this allows you to ensure all of your, all of your images are, are ready for, for that um, if, if that's your configuration, which is really nice. Um, you don't have to uh, re-upload images or, or um, um, keep copies of them uh, or, or different formats or so on and so forth. So it's really simplified the deployment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Uh, all right, so we've spoken already on the bug deployment. Let's take a closer look at the next thing, which is deployment and rolling upgrades. Uh, so let's talk with a small utility, but it's very handful. Uh, I've been working with a lot of customers that was, this is an area of pain. Uh, so very long lived OpenStack installation will carry around database roles for years and years. Uh, it's a Good story. Uh, Operated is to have a way to ability to purge uh, deleted rows, possibly on a schedule like a cron job, uh, um, or needed before upgrades or prior to maintenance. Uh, so the new utility allows you to clean up uh, uh, these rows already marked for deletion. Uh, uh, so uh, you can actually specify a certain uh, age. The age is calculated uh, as a timeline, a time delta in days, which can be given in a command line. So that's a very nice utility uh, for admins and it's, uh, the link is there. Um, implementing force detached to allow self cleanup of a stock volume. Where we had about stock volume? Yeah, uh, we, we talked about it like 10 minutes ago, right? So we have all these states where we have uh, uh, unresolved states with stock volume, uh, uh, such as attaching or detaching, uh, and there was no safe way to clean up uh, uh, this involved backend storage. Now, uh, with this uh, feature, we can use the Python CLI, uh, uh, a cinder state, but it's not, it's not full because uh, it allows us to, uh, it will only change the Cinder database and may leave uh, some 
volume exported to the computers and may leave entering Nova. So that feature is actually uh, there to resolve that stuff. And as, as I said, the work is done in Cinder. And in this case as well, we need also have uh, work to be done in Nova to finish it. Um, with that, uh, we want to talk about one of the biggest features coming up in Cinder uh, that, uh, that's going to really, really simplify the rolling upgrades, uh, which is the Cinder objects, uh, supporting upgrades uh, by using actually virgin objects. Uh, these objects are isolated uh, from the schema and contain required information and communication about the operation. Uh, the objects can be sent over RPC. Uh, the work is started actually in, already in Kilo, and this is a, a, a big work to be done. And we have actually design sessions uh, specifically on, on this topic, so I'll look at your schedule uh, if you want to attend it. And of course, uh, there's compute with Nova objects already there. We're pretty trying to, to simulate the same thing in Cinder. Um, more on, on deployment and rolling upgrades, um, Cinder storage policies. Um, so as you know, if I'm a storage uh, vendor and I have uh, unique capabilities to my backend, I can write a driver and use extra specs to create a volume type to match these characteristics. However, we ended up in a state where we have a lot of vendors exposing very nice features, but with no consistent way uh, that the cloud admin can actually use. So we need to improve the visibility of storage policies uh, uh, to the cloud admin, either using the CLI horizon, uh, and uh, uh, this, of course, think, think about capabilities like quality of service, replication factor. One vendor can have gold, bronze. The other one can have uh, IO bound limit. So we need that to come up with a more standard API uh, and to be able to expose it all the way up to the user. So this is more uh, uh, admin facing feature. And with that, we're going to talk about the last topic, which is security. Um, and one notable feature that was added is the uh, private volumes types. Uh, it's a new Cindy ability to define private volumes based on the volume types. Uh, now, now it can actually be restricted uh, uh, based on the, this new uh, flagging. Uh, private volumes are special needs uh, when most of you should be not be able to uh, uh, select this volume. Think about like I'm creating a new high performance uh, uh, volumes that I only want to expose to a specific development group or production group that I don't want to expose to any other users to make because they cost me tons of fortune just to send them up and connect it to my cloud. So I need a way to restrict that uh, volume types uh, to my user and allow private volumes. Uh, uh, and of course, I can control it by removing a project from. Um, more security in, in Liberty. So Glance. Uh, image signing encryption. This is actually one of the sessions that's going on in the next door right now. And right now, there is no way to guarantee that the image you asked Glance uh, for is uh, the image you actually got in Nova because we don't have a way to sign uh, the images. Uh, so this feature has been actually discussed in the past and it finally looks like it's going to land in Liberty. Um, image signing and encryption by Barbican as the key manager. So, so we're looking, to those of you who haven't looked at it, Barbican, Barbican is the, a, a new service that allows us to do uh, centralized key management in OpenStack. And we're trying to leverage, uh, as you can see, it in the context of images. And of course, the goal is to uh, uh, provide image uh, uh, integrity. Um, on Horizon, uh, volume encryption. So uh, we, we, uh, volume encryption were already, already done in previous cycles. Now uh, Horizon is following. So support for volume encryption for Horizon is almost there. Uh, some of the work is actually done, as I said, but it will uh, we're going to uh, continue the work in this cycle uh, to finish it. And let's talk about object storage. So where we are with Swift in terms of uh, security features. So we have new features, actually two features, uh, encrypted at rest, uh, encryption and rest. So currently objects are typically stored uh, 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 in, on a disk file in a static POSIX file system, uh, providing an option to Swift uh, operators to have uh, objects stored in an encryption form. And, and think about uh, uh, the, the life cycle, right? So uh, when this reach end of life, uh, they can be discarded if not properly uh, wiped, uh, right? So you have left of information that someone can access we better want it to be encrypted. And if you're using object storage in OpenStack, which you do because you're storing your backup tool, we want this feature. <laughs> uh, moving on, another important feature is actually around Swift, uh, 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 composite tokens and service accounts. So if it rings a bell, it, it, because we implemented it in Keystone lately, and we're actually making use of it already in the context of Swift, we might as well utilize it in the future in Cinder, et cetera. 
com composite tokens uh, allow other OpenStack services to store data in Swift on behalf of the client uh, that neither the client or the service can update the data without both parties' consent. So you need two keys to this safe in order to open it. Uh, examples, user requests that Nova uh, save a snapshot of a VM. Nova passes the request to Glance. Glance writes the image to Swift container as a set of objects. And then the user cannot modify the snapshot without also having uh, uh, the token from the service, as well as the service uh, uh, ca can update the data, cannot update the data without a valid token from the user. Uh, as I said, if you want more information, each one of the services, just use the link uh, we, we attached. And with that, we want to actually zoom into some final thoughts. As, as we saw, we came a long way uh, in this release specifically uh, to get more close to enterprise grade uh, storage in OpenStack. But as you saw, we, we, we went through a ladder with a lot of steps, right? All the way from where we are in high availability uh, of the services like, uh, and how much work we still have to do uh, just in Active Active, for example. Uh, we looked how progress we came in just to provide backups uh, using the Cinder uh, uh, backup service, but they still uh, including incremental uh, um, snapshots that was added in the life cycle, NFS, uh, POSIX, all the great improvements, but still we have to work on the scale of the service because otherwise we have enter performance uh, uh, problems. We saw a lot of improvements around volume management. You saw how many things we had in volume migration, for example, the, the, the uh, simplifying the work uh, there, uh, as well as rolling upgrades, management, all this aspects of deployment. Uh, so uh, as you can see, the, the topics we touch today are, uh, go extremely away from simple utilities to make the admin lives better, all the way to have a full disaster recovery capability. So, so with all this moving forward, I think one of the uh, uh, example I think we use, we use today is like a turtle race. So we have a good progress in each one of these area, but we are getting progress, that, that's the net, right? So I think with every release, if Juno was uh, pretty much the enterprise, OpenStack enterprise ready V1, I think Kilo is already V2 definitely, and uh, looking at Liberty, we're really, really getting there. Uh, and there's still a lot of work need to be done in each one of these areas, as you see, and this is why we're here in the design sessions. Any final thoughts from you? Uh, I think you covered it. Um, I think we're, all, we're, we're moving uh, all of the pieces in the right direction, and um, uh, I think I think uh, it'll be a busy summer, but but we'll hopefully we'll land some of these. Because you're not taking vacation. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. All right, and with that, we want to open the mic for questions on anything you just saw, and uh, I will leave you with this uh, barcode as well, so you can actually download the slides and get more information as well. Um, any questions? Please use the mic there. Yeah. I'm uh, just wondering if uh, you support the Pixie Boots for images in Glance? Um, like and so basically, uh, we want to manage our own images on the appliance. So and we don't want it. We want to do a net boot out of, uh, of the standard Pixie server. So, so what we would store in Glance would just be an iPixie client that, that to bootstrap the real image that's somewhere else. That should work. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, have, so that works today, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to Can look you, for hidden. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I haven't tried it firsthand, but but yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, those work. pieces should fit together the way you would expect. Right. Yeah. So one one other question. So when we store today the images, uh, they're not encrypted, correct? In Glance. That's uh, correct. Correct. Okay, so that's something that's coming up next. Correct. Week. So sorry, I yeah. came late to the. All right. So. All right. Thanks. Sure. More questions. Hi. So when you talk about the QoS, are we planning to provide commands to? do a control of flow or any of the properties on the array side? So quality of service has actually come a long way in, in Cinder. Uh, and it's pretty much today up to the uh, uh, back end to report, uh, as I said, using extra specs. Uh, uh, one of the things you see is trying to simplify the standard around there. So uh, please attend the design sessions to impact if you want more things to include it there. But I think we're, there, already now there's a great variety of, of storage drivers that can expose great uh, uh, functionality of quality of service. So I think it's, if we need more functionality, functionality, this is why we have these sessions so you can impact. Thank you. And right. just one more question. Yeah. So what about remote replication? Anything we are planning? So uh, 
that's a good topic. As I said, volume replication has came a long way. Uh, we actually gave a talk yesterday about uh, disaster recovery in OpenStack and things you can actually do today uh, out of the box. But again, uh, it's still uh, a work in progress. If you're talking about between sites, right? Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, as you saw from my presentation, one of the things we're trying to deal with V2 of replication is, is actually be able to do replication between cinders, right? So that's uh, another, but th there's a lot of things you can actually do today. Uh, I would not uh, recommend you using any stretch cluster topology because of the latency, um, but uh, there are a lot of things you can do today with different backends like uh, Ceph, et cetera, with RBD. Thank you. Can you explain a little bit on what is missing for volume, volume encryption in Horizon? And then my understanding is that there is two types of encryption. is a front-end, which will be handled by Nova, and back-end, which will be, I guess, handled by Cinder. And do you support both, or what the state exactly of so do you want volume to encryption? Uh, encryption. Um, I said correctly. Uh, is, is, it, is it exposed to Horizon? You may know this yeah, better yeah, than that, I. That's, 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 what, that's exactly the, what we're working on right now, the exposed. So if I understand correctly the question, uh, can you maybe repeat it in a different I mean, way? Uh, you, you were mentioning that there were some issues that you didn't fully finish up mm -hmm. volume encryption. So yeah. I wanted to know what are these issues. And so then depending on your answer, I wanted to know if both front-end and back-end encryption are supported or... All right. But so, state so, basically so a volume encryption. Cinder encryption is already there today. Yeah. What is missing is, is a way for us to <laughs> expose it out. So okay. that, that's where your question. This is the current way that's taking place right now. Right. So it's, it started uh, in the last cycle. It's still going on, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, finish it. But yeah, this is, this is exactly what we're tackling right now. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, last question. And if not, I want to thank you all uh, for surviving the, the, the day and with the last session. And I want to thank John. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you.